but obtain mercy because I did ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a beautiful thing and worthy of all assumption that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. How great it for this cause I will take mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show for all of suffering for a battle together, which show hereafter. Believe for him to life everlasting. Now unto the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This child I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war and good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some have having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck of whom is Himios and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may let not to blaspheme. Amen. Amen. And while I'm talking, you could go to Acts chapter 20, verse 28 to 32. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, verse 28 to 32. Verse 28. Yeah, not, not yet, but when, when we get there. Uh, in the Second World War, uh, the German troops flew over Britain and they dropped banknotes, English pounds. But they made them themselves. They weren't real English pounds. And they were hoping to cause the economy of England to just uh, collapse by these false notes. They were fake notes. They weren't real English pounds. A real gospel minister knows the truth and knows the faith and can spot the faith that is the heart of a gospel minister that their sound in sound doctrine if you turn to Acts chapter 20 verse 28 to 32 Acts chapter 20 verse 28 to 38 32. Acts, Acts chapter 2, 20 verse 28 to 32. Verse 15. Take heed therefore unto yourself, and to honor the Lord, over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseas, to free the church of God, which he had purchased with his own land. For I know this, that after my departure shall be your news, and that he among you, not sparing them from you. So, in, in that passage, Paul is saying, take it, there's going to be wounds coming. And he's, it's going to be false teachers coming. And he's in Ephesus. And he's having a full siege to come in. And if you go to 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 3, as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia. So Paul is telling Timothy, I want you to stand against false teachers. An authentic gospel minister spots, spots the dangers of false teaching. If a little boy puts his head in a cooker, you as a mom or a dad are going to say, no, don't put your head there. And the church are like little children. And they can be easily swayed by false teachers. And you as leaders of the church 
and to have discernment to know who the false teachers and to warn your people and you are also if you are not a pastor or in leadership as to respect your leaders because they are the ones that God has appointed to teach you and protect you against all teachers. In uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 4, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 4, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 4 it says, Notice this, neither give heed to fables, endless genealogies, which minister questioning, rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. So, there were people going around, chat, 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 talking big about theology. But they were just getting people arguing and arguing about things. It was not edifying people. And you get young men coming to church, thinking that the best preacher since Billy Graham. But they couldn't teach a chicken. They, they couldn't teach anybody. But they think they're Billy Graham. They come into church and the people think, oh, he's wonderful. But you've got to be discerning and see where the real truth is and not all the false teachers. You turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. You can wait. 1 Timothy chapter 1, 8 to 10. But we know that the law is good if a man uses it in law. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the unworthy and for the sinners, for the unworthy and profane, for members of fathers and the members of family, for man's slaves. That's just number 10. For all others, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men spirits, for lions, for pigeon persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. So there were teachers going around saying the gospel is the law. That the way to heaven is the law. And Paul says no no no. The law shows us our sin. It shows us that we are sinners. We go to verse 11 and it says, <coughs> According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which is committed to my trust. So Paul is saying that the law is showing our sin. You are not saved by the law. So there were people going around the Roman world saying the apostles have got it wrong. All this Jesus died for us. We don't need that. Obey the law and you'll be saved. Yeah. And there will be many in the church that will bring the law they will say unless you come to church wearing a suit you're not saved unless you do this or do that you're not saved they creep it in with the law but we preach Christ crucified we obey the law but the law cannot save us the Lord is doing not lie, steal, commit adultery, etc. And there's also a, a movement around the world today, the Messianic movement. And very often they bring in the law. And they talk more about the law than Christ. 
So be careful. But false teaching comes in, and we must have been intimidated. If you turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. So these false teachers are very proud. They think they know it all. And the people in the church are impressed with them. And Timothy, very, very timid. He's got to deal with these flush leaders that are false. Paul says, do not be intimidated. You have the spirit of power and of some mind. So you as ministers, must never feel intimidated by some young preacher who has 5,000 people but is teaching a lot of nonsense. If you are preaching the Bible, don't be intimidated. Now, these teachers in 1 Timothy chapter 1 with the law and fables they were talking about. But make it very, very complex Christianity. A false Christianity. Very complex. But real, authentic ministers of the gospel. Keep it simple. So, one very simple. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 11. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God who is committed to my trust, a simple gospel. And then 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. It says, Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and a good conscience and a faith of faith. And simple gospel. A simple holy living. And that's Christianity. Preaching the gospel, simple. Living a holy life, simple. But these false teachers bring confusion, arguments, division. So stay away from it. If you want to know where to be in church, look for the minister that preach a simple gospel and preach simple holy living. But if you, if you hear this, I died, I'm a pastor. I died.